All right. Time for Random Hangout. Hey, Rhonda. Hi. Hey. Okay, we're going to do the intro. Let's play our intro. And we're going to do. I think they figured out that I didn't know how to share because it's got a new sharing feature. It's easier now. I hope you're dancing. Are you dancing? I'm dancing. I'm really psyched. It's going to be awesome. Hey, I got something to say to you, Rhonda. What? <laughs> I love that. I got to show you something. Look. Okay. Don't be looking at my boobies. Look at my shirt. Ah, oh, I like the shirt. And the boobies are nice, too. Hey, look. Can you see the back? Can you see the back? That's my butt. Don't look at my butt. Results on a rampage. And look at that booty. You got booty on a rampage, too. <laughs> Are you going to twerk for us? Am I going to twerk? Oh, my God. You do not want to see me twerk. I don't think I me can. Either. I look like I'm having a seizure if I try to twerk. <laughs> 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 All right. So I have a big surprise for you that you haven't seen yet. So I've never, I've never screen shared before live, so I'm going to try it so that I can show you my big surprise. I think you're going to love right. it. It. You're probably going to hate me, but you're going to love it. It's going to be so funny. So here's my big surprise for you, okay? All right. I'm ready. I better not. Right. Yes. Let me do the screen share, you guys. Give me just a moment to do my screen share here. Oh, I see your screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Uh-huh. Okay. Great. All right. You see it? I see it. All right. Here we go. Hi. Rhonda Wall here with VA Village and your co-host for uh, the Random Hangouts. You guys may have heard that there is an ice bucket challenge going on right now. Uh, a lot of the celebrities are doing it, and I thought we need to start a revolution on Google Plus uh, with the Google Plus host so that we can raise awareness for ALS. So. You have to do the ice bucket challenge, have the ice water poured over your head, and then you challenge um, come other up. people to do it as well. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm going to take the ice bucket challenge. My son is eagerly awaiting to pour ice water over my head. So um, when I'm, once I do this, I probably won't be able to talk. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you who I challenge. I am challenging even a tailor. And I'm also challenging Phil Boyer. And I'm also challenging Lisa Ingalls. So, you guys, you have to do it too. We want to raise awareness with my other uh, Google Hangout show host. So, here goes. I'm going to back up a little bit so I don't get my camera wet. My son's going to pour the ice water over my head. You guys that I challenge, you do it too, and make sure you tag me on Google Plus so I get to see it. All right, here we go. Oh, no. All right, be gentle. Yes, I'm ready. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh. Okay, you guys got to do it. You do it too. Thanks. <laughs> okay, now are you up for the challenge? I'm up for the challenge, but I didn't see it. Like the video didn't play at all. It didn't play? I mean, I, I heard all the audio, but I didn't get to see you get drenched. You'll have to post it. Are you serious? It just oh, no. I did the screen share. I know you did, but it showed black, so I think you're going to have to uh, post it in the event page so we can see it. And Yeah, I, I will. I'll post the link to the video so everyone can watch the video. And I'm going to tag you guys, and you have to take the challenge, too. So are you saying so I'm supposed to get my 14-year-old? So what is the name of the game? I'm supposed to get drenched it's with... It's called the Ice Bucket. Yeah, it's called the Ice Bucket Challenge. 
and it's to raise awareness for ALS. So you you take the challenge, and then you have to challenge three other people. If they don't do it, they have to make a donation of $100 to ALS. But by doing it, you're also raising awareness. So I thought we could do that by getting some of the other uh, Google Hangout uh, show hosts involved so that they can help raise awareness too and have a little fun. And then they can challenge other Google Hangout show hosts. So when you do your challenge, think of three other Google Hangout show hosts and challenge them so that we can kind of get a whole awareness going on the Google Hangouts with all the other people who host shows as well. I think that's awesome and I think my son will just love doing that and maybe his friends or something and I better do right. it. Exactly. Yeah, work. my son kept telling me there's not enough ice in here. There's not enough ice in here. I'm like, yeah, there's plenty of ice in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? that there is a book out there that talked about, it's almost like the Livestrong bracelet or when the men are wearing the beards in November, that one of the ways to really right. build your brand is to make it visible for people. So that is exactly what they're doing. Right. They've already raised over $3 million for ALS with this challenge, so it's working. It really and it's really great. It's for a great call, so be a good sport. And I can't wait to see your video. So you have to post it on YouTube and then tag me so I can see you take the challenge. You got to do it within 24 hours too. That's, oh, yeah. that's another uh, Are you stipulation. Serious? So yeah, I'm very serious. So you have to do it today or tomorrow. <laughs> Bite me on that one. Okay, but wait. <laughs> speaking of brand awareness, speaking of your brand, right. I got to share something with you. Uh, okay. The other day, I, I had an early day and I had to go out. And my first stop, there's like a little um, stop and go right next to my house. Right. So I picked up a mocha and I paid $1.19. Oh, look at you, frugal coffee buyer. Right? And it was a DIY mocha. It was a DIY mocha because. Uh, you can mix whatever you want with the button. I made months, yeah, pretty much. So being the DIY marketer, I had a DIY mocha and it cost me a dollar. Dollar nineteen. Later on that day, <laughs> on that day, I'm, I'm coming home and I needed another cup of coffee. But the only thing available was the dreaded Starbucks. Uh huh. You know, people that do not know. Oh, that, you know, like, dread Starbucks. I do not like Starbucks, and this would be one of the reasons why I don't like them. Do you see that? Three hundred and three dollars and sixty-five cents for what they call a tall, which, like, on what universe in the medium? In what universe is tall actually small? Because I know. Ten. I am five foot ten, and no one. People do call me tall. They do not. <laughs> So clearly, Starbucks. Oh, and I know that you're a Starbucks fan, so you know all you. I am. Uh, look, I am a gold here. member. I'm a gold member of Starbucks, and not only am I a gold member, but I have my trusty Starbucks cup that I keep my tea in. I never leave home without it, and. I just recently purchased my very own Starbucks Frappuccino cup because I love going to Starbucks and getting Frappuccinos every day almost. So um, I actually have the Starbucks app too so I can keep up with how much I'm spending and you don't even want to know what that total is. <laughs> so, I probably could have uh, saved a small thriving country by now. <laughs> it's all involved. If you're like me, Hashtag Starbucks, Starbucks hater. Your hashtag Starbucks hater. Tell us what annoys you. It annoys me that I have to pay that much money. It annoys me that I can't order in English. It annoys me that the music is too loud. In like, I in my area I have to pay for internet. So just to like walk in and get my email is like ten bucks a pop. Unless they've changed that recently, because I try not to go there and do anything if I can. Team Rhonda, you are hashtag Starbucks. Hashtag Starbucks lovers. So if you are Starbucks lovers and gold card members like me, you are card-carrying members of Starbucks, then 
tweet out why you love Starbucks, like the atmosphere. I love just walking in. I love the way it smells. I love the way that the baristas are so happy and excited because they're high on caffeine and coffee, and they're so sweet. And they remember when you come in all the time, they remember what you want. I can order it like I want it. They make it for me. They make me feel good. They write my name on my cup. <laughs> it's all, and the Wi-Fi is free where I live, so I love that too. And I just like the atmosphere and the community of it. It's like when you go, when you, like, you have a whole community around it. So, like, if I tweet out or I Facebook out, you know, I got me a coffee at the get-and-go. I mean, who cares, you know? But when I say, hey, I'm going to Starbucks for my Frappuccino fix, everyone cares because they know, they know that experience and they've had that experience with me. So Starbucks is genius in the fact that they've created this whole community around their high-priced coffee. And it kind of helps, too, that they're putting crack in the Frappuccinos. That's just, I'm just kidding, Starbucks. Please don't ban me. Please don't take away my gold card. I'm just picking up this kid. Clearly. But no, they're very addictive, and I love them, and I always pick and say, yeah, they, they're putting crack in that stuff because I'm like, oh, I got to go get my Starbucks. <laughs> they have a great brand, and one of the reasons they have a great brand is for those of us that are hashtag Starbucks haters, we know why we hate them, and those of people like you that are Starbucks lovers, no. Ah, look, look, look. Uh -huh. We have a Starbucks lover. Let me show you. Oh, we yeah. have uh, Miss Sharon is uh, is Team Rhonda, and she is a Starbucks lover, but she won't get the cups. I don't know what's up with that, but you know. I love the cups. You get a little discount if you have your own cup, too. I think it's like um, 30, 40 cents or something like that, and you're you're saving the universe because you're not using all those paper cups. Blah, blah, blah. But, hey. I got one. <laughs> that, and, and this we need help with this conversation, don't you think, Rhonda? We need help. Well, yeah, we need to uh, dive in. So this what the what this really is all about is why do we buy certain things? And before we we get to our guest today, though, I want to tell you what my bathroom epiphany is because it has to do oh, yes. with this as well. So my bathroom epiphany for this week was um, what your uh, the the toilet paper that you buy tells a lot about your value system. Oh my word! And, I was gonna put what toilet paper for you today. <laughs> so what I mean by that is it's like okay, so I was in the bathroom and I'm sitting there, you know, and nothing. <laughs> else to do. Oh, oh, okay. So this is a random show, so I just had a random memory. Let me tell you guys this because it's so freaking funny. Okay, so we took away my stepson's phone for the day because he got in trouble and I won't disclose what he did. But um, so he's going into the bathroom with uh, some kind of magazine. And I'm like, what are you doing? Are you planning on being in there a while? He's like, yeah, you took my phone away, so now i got to go old school. <laughs> All right. So oh. anyway. <laughs> was that your battery? So, what the hell? Yeah, no, it wasn't. That was just a, that was a random divert. Okay, because uh, it was a random thought that came into my head. All right, so the toilet paper that you buy tells a lot about your value system. So I'm in the bathroom, and I'm like, Okay, so I buy like the, the Scott bathroom tissue that's good for your septic tank and you know it's not real fluffy like pillows, but it's not John Wayne toilet paper either. So <laughs> what that says about me is I'm sensible and I'm not gonna spend a lot of money for something I'm just gonna flush down the toilet anyway. But you can go to some people's house and you know they have the big fluffy cushiony toilet tissue and so they put a lot of value into what they're wiping with, and I don't. That's just not where I spend my money. But you have these other people, too, who use the sensible toilet paper in their bathroom, but in the guest bathroom, you will see that they have the soft, fluffy tissue. So they value what their guests think or the experience that their guest has in the bathroom or at their house or 
whatever. I notice you do that. You yeah. have soft toilet paper. Softness and in the gas in the guest bathroom. But I don't know what about your bathroom, but in the guest bathroom you do. So but that's you, you're a caretaker. You want people to be happy and feel welcomed and nice at your home and so that's what you value. <laughs> I value that my bum feels soft. <laughs> that's what I value. Oh my god, we lost Kellen. We had our expert. It's okay. I think he went out because he thought uh, we were crazy or he was in the wrong place. Back. But that's bringing me in because we want to talk about why do people buy certain things and why most importantly, why do they buy from you and why would they buy from you? We want you back, Kellen. Come back. Come back in. Come back. We do. <laughs> we scared him off. We scared him off when you started talking about toilet paper and the poor man just ran away. I know. Well, see, Sharon's right with me. She buys Scott, too. She's not worried about the softness. Me and Sharon, we've got to hang. We will go to the restroom together, and then we'll wash our hands and go to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sharon is team Rhonda all the way. You know, so while, I love while Kellen gets on the call, the first, I've got just a couple quick questions that I want to get resolved with him. The first is the correct pronunciation of his name, because I feel like I can get myself in a lot of trouble. Right. Google will kick me out. As well as I want him, I'm curious about his views on Starbucks versus loving or hating. Uh, okay. And then, only then do I want to hear about what the deal is with uh, <laughs> with the, uh, what do you call it, Your why people should buy from you. Let me see, make sure I got him in here. He keeps okay, with. great. Oh, I've already converted uh, Sharon. She's also going to get the cup as well. So, um, good job for me. I've done sold a Starbucks cup this morning. My my work here is done. <laughs> it should have you as a as a uh, what do you call it? Spokesperson, <laughs> an affiliate. I need to be a Starbucks affiliate. That's what you need to be because you're a big you're a big. Okay, here he is. There he is. Yay! Welcome. Hey, did you turn him off? How come I can't see his camera? No, I didn't turn him off. There he is. I tend to turn people off, but not today. <laughs> Are you with our toilet paper talk? Yeah, I turned him right off with that. Hi, how are you? Can you hear us? I can hear you. How are you? We are doing great. Even though you want to uh, give introduction here. Okay, so I have to I ha actually. Okay, so remember, here it is, Kellen, for you. Look at that. Yeah. Roar. It's your shirt. I got it in the mail. All right. And I was so excited to wear it to today's program in your honor because I want to tell you a little bit about Kellen. I'm going to let him do a lot of that. Um, I met Kellen on a Google Hangout, you know, through the Google Hangout community. I found this awesome Hangout, and he's actually a member of another community that I'm a part of and that I watch very closely. And he... I don't know if he's hashtag woo woo, okay, but definitely out there all about mindset. But Kellen's got a super uh, successful show, uh, radio show in LA. Uh, and but before you begin, Kellen, I want to hear all about you. But before you begin, are you Starbucks lover or Starbucks hater? Well, I don't drink coffee, so uh, I understand that I, I've been listening to the show and I get the marketing, and so in that way I like them. But the products I don't participate in. Sorry. There you go. Likewise, I'm not into it, all right? Okay, now that we got you, Kellen, uh, you are here to talk about why we should buy. Why? How do I get you to choose me? This is a favorite topic of mine. Why don't you just kind of like give us your soapbox on that topic? You mean I boss we... Is that what you mean? Oh, I missed that. Do I mean what? I said, they're asking me like to talk about why we buy the things we buy. I'm asking you because I think what we're going to talk about is why should I buy from you. So you have a whole platform on, you know, how this thing happens and what you have to do to develop oh. a story.
in my in in the, in the the way I look at it, a business has a you buy from a business because it makes you feel a certain way. You buy from a business because it creates an emotional engagement with you. Emotional engagement is powerful. We're less and less interested in the stuff itself, even though we need it, and more and more interested in how we feel and the experience associated with it, which is one of the reasons Starbucks does everything and turned a 50 cent cup of coffee into a five dollar experience and so it is about the process <laughs> and experience of having that so you buy from me uh, you you buy from me because I create an experience for you so if it's about the breakthrough coaching that I do which is uh, some of it's a bit woo woo but if it's about that experience for you that lets you achieve something that you otherwise not be able to. Um, my screen has gone black. Are you hearing me okay? I Ivana? hear you. I, we, Rhonda, you hear him? I kind of hear you're breaking up a little bit, and we actually see you. Yeah, we can see you. You're, you're okay. It, it's breaking up a little bit, but not bad enough where it, it's affecting, so you're good. Oh, and of course, if you're talking, we can't hear you now. <laughs> All right. So Just I'll as soon as we talking. said you were good. Anyway, I, in, there in you go. My own, oh. All right. Personal brand. Uh, break the cage is one of the things that I do. You would buy from me because I'm able to get you to do things you otherwise would not be able to do. I'm able to do, help you do things that you don't think you can do with tools you don't know you have and power you don't know you control. I'm able to help you create an experience in your life that is unlike anything else that you can do. Profit marketing created for your ideal client that is completely different from anyone else's experience, then you're not going to have any luck. I mean, the, a business today is about creating a unique experience. And so my personal teaching about that is that your unique experience, the thing that nobody can duplicate at all, is your personal story, your own journey, where you've been, who you are, what you know better than anyone else in the world. So when I get a new client, the first thing I ask them is a bunch of questions to figure out why they're different than everybody else in the world and then tie that to what they're really passionate about. Because when you mix their own personal desires and passion with their own unique story, I don't. there's no way to duplicate that advantage in the marketplace and you can create a unique and powerful positioning uh, with that, just like you talked about Starbucks or other brands that create position around story and around passion. So how do you get people, I mean, I get what you're saying, but how do I uncover what my special story is? I mean, I don't know. Oh. So, yeah, everyone so we'll just do it right now. Here's a live stage Everybody demo. Has different stories they can relate to different things. Like if you've lived long enough and you're almost 40 like I am, I have several stories, you know. Of, yeah, of you've got enough stories. For I, have, I have tragedy stories. I have, I have plenty of stories. So how do you know uh, which one it is that you should, be, um, you should be sharing to create that experience? Or do you share them all at different points? Or how do you so, really know what story is it that you should kind of start with? That's a spectacular question. I couldn't have planted it better. So the answer is I have a story blueprint. And I, st I start with clients having them line out or just list 10 or 15 or maybe 20 really impactful events in their lives. You uh -huh. know, it, it, it may be small, it may be big, it may be something big like somebody died or parents got divorced or something bad happened to you. It may be good things like you got some great celebration in your life because you accomplished something. But list 10 or 20 really significant events. Sometimes I break group, you know, developmental, teen, adult, etc. That's just part one. Then the next thing is I have you think about and write down what did that event do to you? 
it taught you what? That there's safety in the world, that there's danger in the world, that even though it's terrible right now, there'll be a dawn, the sun will come up tomorrow, that things are never as bad as they seem, or whatever it is, right? I mean, each of those events are significant with you for a reason. And so then I have you list the reason those are significant. And then step three is the piece that most storytellers miss, and most people that are talking about using personal story in business miss. So after you have figured out what those events are for you, and after you figure out what they did to you, then the next piece you do is figure out why that transformation in you matters to your client. And that's where you tie what you do as a business with what has happened to you. So let me give you an example. Okay, when I was in high school, I had a performance with the band. I was the piano soloist. It was a very difficult piece, Rhapsody in Blue, for band and, and piano. And I'm, I'm a concert level pianist now, but I did that in high school. I made some mistakes. It didn't turn out perfect. So I had this awful experience emotionally, feeling like, you know, things are bad and, and, and so forth. And then the, what, so what that did to me is it made me frightened to perform in some ways, and, but it taught me that there was an end to that period of being frightened. So there were some things that it taught me. So when I do breakthrough work, or when I teach marketing work to businesses right now, I can relate those personal experiences real time with that story to clients by helping them understand that they're going to go through the same experiences with marketing when they're trying difficult like using YouTube or trying to create a social media presence that they don't know how to do very well and I could teach those principles in a really powerful way using that story I love that example Ron. so that's how you decide sorry go ahead that's how you decide what no, that's that's how you teach. That, that's how you teach it. So if I were working with you, Ivana, or, or you, Rhonda, I would simply ask you to list those things. And then, because I would be coaching you, I know what you do for business, and we would, in our conversation, create a whole bunch of hooks, how you can tell those stories, but use it in the language of your client, the ideal language of your avatar, the language of their fears, frustrations, needs, desires, and fantasies, so that your stories become important to them. And when your stories become important to them, they then connect with you. And they then associate you with winning or losing in their own lives through your story. And that's how you then become important to them. And they want to know the outcome. They want to know that you won or that you lost or that it was happy or that it was sad and why. And creating that connection is, is the powerful way to include your story. Now, there's a second part to Rhonda's question that I want to talk about, and that's this. When you're telling your story like you do from a platform speech, and you need to weave a story, yeah, we all that are old, very old, have way too many things to tell in a story. So Did you how I decide. Very old? <laughs> yeah, no, what I, what I do when I speak from platform is I know my audience. I know who they are, the demographic, what they want, why they're or what the event is and so forth and because I've practiced with all these pieces of story and already figured out how they tie to my potential clients needs I then can quickly in a couple of hours in preparation weave a story that uses half a dozen of those events to punctuate needs that I know the audience has things that they'll think are funny that they think are stupid uh, you know all of those kinds of things but do it in a seamless and powerful way but that only comes by having practiced it in other way several times and so then you can pick half a dozen that fit in that audience really well and tell it powerfully with the right anchoring and all that stuff that you do for NLP but you can do it in a really uh, convincing and powerful way that really connects emotionally with the audience when you have become very practiced in your own heart about how it what it did for you and why it matters to your potential client. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense, yeah. And I have, like, a tragic story that I'm not going to tell here today, but I have kind of a tragic story and a tragic event that happened in my life, and I use that story not really to sell people, but it's like I can kind of tell when um, that story just kind of flows with me sometimes and with some people. And I've noticed that when I, I do tell that story to someone, then I, they have maybe the same experience or the same impact um, that my story um, had. They had that same tragic thing happen um, with them. So 
I love that, and it does make that um, connection um, to have that story. Even though I don't use that story, it was really tragic. I don't use that story to sell people or anything, but it does come up in conversation. And it is a story, and it is a way for people to really connect with me and know what I'm all about and what I've come through and all that kind of stuff. So I totally get that, and, I, and it is an experience. And you know, I uh, I attended a church, and the pastor was always like, if you if you knew everyone's story, you would fall in love with them. And it, it's so true. Because there, when people tell their story and they tell things, there's always something in there that you can relate to, even if you're opposite in ways or whatever. Just like me and even though we're total opposites in personalities and stuff, but we have some stories and some backgrounds and stuff that are similar and that we can relate to, and it it really in, engages us with one another. And I notice that people that I tend to listen to or um, or buy from or whatever they I do know a little bit of their background and what they're about and it does make me you know drawn to that person a little more um, just because of that because of maybe their value systems or things that I know about them and you know things like that too so I, I totally get it but I appreciate you helping with that's one thing that you know people have questions about is okay what story should I use because you know when we you know when you're not you know in your twenties you probably have more than one story and have more than one experience. It's funny, sad, whatever. So that's fantastic. I love the way that, that you, uh, you know, kind of blueprinted out that way. What do well, you think, Ivana? Well, I want to know, do you use, Kellen, do you use more than one story? Do you advocate using more than one? Or do you typically advise that people have one, like, foundational story, like a brand story? What do you, what do you advocate? So it, let me just, it, it depends. You're trying, the, the purpose of story in marketing and in business is to create rapport. We know no like and trust, the words, buzzwords on the internet. Rapport comes from three things. It comes from a shared experience like Rhonda talked about. It comes from shared goals and it comes from a shared worldview. So if we've had similar experiences, we immediately have things to talk about, whether they're sports team or growing up. If we have similar goals, like we're on the same band wagon and we want to see that we're, we're moving together, then you immediately have a bunch to talk about. If you, it doesn't about a neighborhood, whatever, you, you immediately have things to talk about. So those three things create powerful rapport. When you think about using story in rapport so that the no like and trust factor goes way up and you can short circuit what sometimes used to take a long time getting to know someone and then they will know like and trust you now I'm assuming they have they need what you have I'm not advocating trying to sell anything to people that don't have because that's against integrity and I just don't do business that way and I don't teach that but creating rapport is the purpose of story so when you're speaking excuse me when you're speaking from the stage I personally have two or three core stories okay and I use them differently so many of them relate to the breakthrough work that I do but I have a and I'm a little bit different because I have four or five lives okay I'm one of these weird frenetic people that have actually lived four or five lives I've had a recording studio for 35 years I'm a martial artist and I've written five books on meditation I've been a C-level executive in two countries and spoken around the world I'm a concert pianist I paint I have paintings and galleries around the world so I it, it, I, I can pick several stories from that and tell a thread that is consistent and do it with great passion and fun. Okay, so that, what about those calls that, that suck in on the situation? So what about if you're someone that doesn't have the kind of breadth and depth of experience like you do? What's What are we supposed to do? You have, it doesn't matter. First words out of his mouth is I got nothing to tell, there's nothing interesting about my life and I suck. First three things out of his mouth and I said, <laughs> okay. And I wasn't going to argue. But then I started asking him how come he was what he was. <laughs> how come he believed what he believed. And, it was, and so I stopped him and I said, well, what is that? 
Well, yeah, I know, but that's not interesting. And I said, well, what if you related it to the client this way? Well, okay. And so it, it I've never met anybody that I couldn't take in 10 or 15 minutes and have them all excited about their own story and immediately see both the connection possibilities and the financial and business possibilities by creating the positioning that makes you unique through that story and then relating it to your business. It's just that most people haven't really thought about it or if they have they haven't thought about how to do this which is the key piece in step three uh, and you know what even as interesting as you said I was when I first started doing this I said the same thing well I don't have a story like Bo Eason okay I watched him tell his story about you know the runt of the litter and I saw him deliver his thing and then heard him give another talk about how to tell story and I thought I've got nothing like that I can't do that so I said the same thing and then I went to work and in a couple hours I thought holy crap I got all kinds of stuff so does everybody so I don't buy it for a minute yeah, and I think, too, another point that you made, your story doesn't have to be this big, elaborate story and this whole tragic thing and, you know, you were homeless or, you know, you had a death or whatever. A lot of it can just be around your hobbies, things that you like to do, it's just experiences that you've had, um, you know, whatever. So uh, you can, that those things are relatable, too, because experience those too so if you like to go hiking or you like to run you know you're into health and fitness or, or um, you know something around your value system or your beliefs or religion or whatever there's all kinds of stuff that you can uh, relate and other people will have those same same experiences as well so a a story doesn't have to be this whole tragedy drama thing it, it can just be who you are what you like and you know what you do for hobbies or what you've ever done for a living or where you went to college or or didn't go to college or whatever so those can be stories too you know it could just be hey I dropped out of high school and then I built you know a fifty million dollar business whatever that's not my story <laughs> I wish but <laughs> That's not my story, but well, I, had one, I mean, it doesn't one have to be a whole drama uh, series or anything, right? One of the favorite stories that I tell is about something funny in high school because I love chemistry. And because I'd done chemistry before high school, they let me be the lab assistant. And I talked about how I was making explosives and almost blew something up in the high school chemistry lab. Okay, <laughs> And so that's one of the funniest stories that I tell. And it's got nothing to do with any world earth-shaking anything. Right. It's got to do with this hysterical thing. And I took this compound into social studies class and about blew up the the classroom and so that's one of the funniest stories that I tell it's got nothing to do with anything except a silly experience in high school so what right so we all have stories if you've lived at age two you have something <laughs> so what comes first Kellen is it the uh, service and offer that you provide or the benefit that you provide to your client or is the story first like which comes first story or the egg <laughs> <laughs> which is it so it, it, I'm going to say it depends. Usually you have to engage, especially if you're meeting them online. In person it might be different or if you're speaking in front of them it might be different. If you're meeting them online you first have to engage the possibility in their mind that you have something important for them. You first engage the possibility that maybe you have something important for them and they actually pay attention because we all have banner blindness and we you know flip from site to site and so forth so if someone's looking for something and they stumble across you however they got there and they can first in the first 10 or 15 seconds in video because that's how I teach it can, can acknowledge the possibility that you might have something for them then the story becomes very captivating if you start with story and they haven't even tweaked to the possibility that they might be interested in what you are or later what you have and I said those in that order on purpose then the story becomes boring and they turn off so the list starts when believe you have a possibility to something, then the lift button goes on. I got it. I got it. Right. Excellent. So that is a really exciting. Hey, Kellen, if someone's really interested yeah. in learning more, 
and you know really developing their story. Don't you have something coming up that's sort of like all around that? I do. I have an event. I hold four times a year. I hold a speed to profit marketing event. Uh, I didn't put on my lower third, but I could. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Speed to profit marketing. So www. Speed to profit marketing. Uh, speed to profit marketing. Com. Uh, forward slash event or just speed to profit marketing. There's actually a free gift there, a freebie. If you want to get the story template, which is a blueprint about how to think about your story, uh, go to speed to profit marketing.com and just opt in there and I will send you the story template or story blueprint, which outlines the steps that I talked about and walks you through using them to help you with your own story. So speed oh, to awesome. profit marketing.com. I, I, and then just opt in there and you can have the story blueprint. If you want to find out about the event, which is very small, it's not big, I keep it to 15 people. I work very intensely with people to create story, to help them create video presence, and to help them move like their business forward in a really big way to start creating positioning online that's really powerful using their personal story. So that's September 15, 16, and 17 in Phoenix. Uh, if anybody's interested, they can go to speed to profit marketing.com forward slash event or just the speed to profit marketing.com to get the story blueprint uh, or places that they can go and connect and get on my list and find out about future things and that kind of stuff. That's perfect. I just put it up in the comment space. So yeah. um, people can definitely go there to find out. Hey, how? what is the proper way to pronounce your name without going to jail? <laughs> so here's a part of the story. There was a conference that I was the keynote speaker at, and my friend put it on, and it was a three-day conference, and on the program, he left the L out of my last name. So uh -huh. I got to spend three days making jokes, and he spent three days on his knees apologizing to me forever for having done that, right? Uh -huh. And so... I, I get it, right? And that's a story I can tell, and it's hysterical. And it was in the electricity business. I mean, it wasn't even in marketing or anything else. But it was still embarrassing because he'd asked me to come be the keynote. Anyway, so my last name is pronounced Flukiger, and the way I teach people that is flu Flukiger. Flukiger is how you pronounce it correctly. Oh, thank you. I had, I had it all wrong and was, like, all ready to have a really good time with it. You know, having being someone with a name that is perpetually mispronounced. I <laughs> really have fun with this, but I really wanted to make sure I got it right, and I want to make sure everyone on the program heard the correct way to pronounce it. I have a story like that, too. I was a keynote in Columbus, and I live in a town called Medina, Ohio, M-E-D-I-N-A. I call it Medina. <laughs> I know, and they misspelled it in the program, and it came out V A G I N A. Oh, vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. That's hysterical, you know. So, what's in a name, right? Ivana. So, oh, got his lower Ivana part. from vagina. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, it happens. It happens. That, that took a, a day or two to quit laughing about that. So there's. The lower third with a couple of ways to get a hold of me. Results on a Rampage is the name of the LA Talk radio show, which I do on Tuesday afternoon. So it's also a hangout. I do those on Tuesday nights. So I have three hangouts that I do per week as well, talking about the, the services that I offer. Exactly. Everyone head over. I'm going to put a link over to his page because he's got tons of hangouts on there, and they're all really awesome. I, you have one on Saturdays. Is that, is that Break the Cage? The one on Saturday is Break the Cage. It's Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. It's about personal breakthrough. Results on a Rampage is about how to create specific results. And I talk about a book that's forthcoming pretty quick called The Results Equation and exactly how to do that. And then one tomorrow, uh, or excuse me, later today, it's right after this, as a matter of fact, is my Speed to Profit Marketing public hangout. So that'll be uh, later today. So I have three a week, yeah. So how do you use these hangouts to market your coaching business? What, how, how does that work for you? How does that process work for you? So I, uh, I do a lot of work on Facebook. 
Uh, G plus is good. I find Facebook faster and easier to get clients from and I love Hangouts and so what I do is I will take the links to my Hangouts, I will promote them on my Facebook page and a lot of my Facebook work is inviting people in a challenging way to move, take action in their lives and so I invite them to send me private messages and when I post powerful posts or questions or videos that I do a lot. I'll get a lot of private messages on Facebook from people that have been watching me for a long time and they'll just ask about my services. Uh, I also do some marketing with Facebook ads and so I drive them to a funnel and uh, then they volunteer to have a, I offer free strategy sessions or jumpstart business sessions or breakthrough sessions. So that's how I use uh, the Hangouts both uh, to spread the word and then to invite them to one of my funnels like uh, speedtoprofitmarketing.com or the event. Uh, I have some other products as well. One's called um, Master Your Monsters, which is an 11 part audio course, and that's at masteryourmonsters.com, which is a, a course about how to get rid of those fear. The, uh, the uh, monsters we used to think were in the closet. You know, the fear monster, the procrastination monster, the I'll be happy when monster. When we were kids, they were going to eat our lunch under the bed and in the closet. Now that we're adults, they've changed names, but they still get us. And that's what I said, fear, procrastination, I'll be happy when, it's not my fault. You know the list, right? We all have uh, lived we with all know the list. Kellen, thank you so much, Rhonda. Anything you want to add before we let Kellen go off and change the world? No, I don't think I want to add anything. It was great. I, I totally agree, and I really appreciate how you broke it down. And I'm going to go and get that um, that blueprint and blueprint. put a little bit of my stories out there. Please do. I'd love to see them. Thank you for awesome. having me. I'm Thank you. We really appreciate this. This has been great. This has been awesome. Awesome. Are we ready to say goodbye? I believe we are. It's been a fun show, guys. I put the link to the Ice Bucket Challenge uh, video so you guys can see me have the ice water poured over my head. I put that in the comments. So uh, go watch that when we're done here. And um, then we'll look forward to seeing um, even a, a post hers as well. Oh, my son's going to be <laughs> here. Kellen, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the. Roar shirt. It's awesome, and I'm looking forward to your next, next hangout. We'll catch you either live or on the replay. All right. Awesome. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was awesome. What? <laughs> Next week, we're really going to raffle. We're going to raffle right. some feathers. I appreciate it. We're totally going to raffle next week. Thank well, you.